let me start with the question that has haunted you for the last five years. And the question simply is this. You are a lawyer who's been recommended to judgeship in 2017. A dozen other people who have been recommended judgeships get their judgeship. But Saurabh Kirpal is not made a judge of the Delhi High Court. And the government of India is sitting on your judgeship. Five years later, let's get this clear. Is it because you openly declared your sexuality, that you were gay, that you genuinely believe that is the reason why the government of India has held up your judgeship, that the government of India cannot accept a gay judge? Well, I don't think there's any other way of saying it, Rajdeep. The fact of the matter is, as you said, there are 12 recommendations. 11 are appointed. I am not. Now, I'm uh, either rather very special, which uh, other than my parents, no one else really believes. So what is the reason, right? I mean, you scratch the surface and you start examining the alleged reasons that have been given. Uh, they're so specious that you think that the real reason is my sexuality. There is absolutely no other possible reason that can come to my mind. Secondly, I also have from some informed sources within the collegium that that is, in fact, the reason, right? So there's no point uh, just guessing. This is stuff that I have heard. So, I mean, have you, have you made any effort or a, an attempt to find out why? I mean, surely your curiosity must have asked you. Others are being made judges. I am not, even though the collegium has recommended my name. You're today telling me you've heard from sources. Are you in a position to actually be able to be told at any stage that this is the reason why we've held up your judgeship? Look, I really believe that a person who is a candidate to be a judge must have no interaction with the executive, right? This is not something I'm dying to do because uh, of personal ambition. To be a judge is a very grave, important thing which requires independence from its very inception, right? So if I start interacting with the executive today to find out why is it that they're not making me a judge, if I have that curiosity about myself, I'd be starting off my judicial career, if any, on a very, very weak footing. So no, I have not asked anybody. And of course, the collegium system is so opaque and the way the government works is so opaque, no one has approached me either. I'll come to the opacity of the collegium system in a moment, but I want to press you just one last time. This is a country where Article 370, uh, Section 377 has been decriminalized. So homosexuality is no longer a crime. Homosexuality is no longer held in any other sphere of life, hopefully, against an individual. But it appears that the government of India believes that having a gay judge in some way would compromise the system. I mean, make sense of that for, for us, for the audience. Look, I think you expect too much of the powers that be and even our country when you said that Section 377 has been decriminalized and therefore all is well. No, it isn't. All Section 377 did was to make sure that a person who has consensual private sex does not go to jail, right? The entire gamut of disabilities, prejudices, they subsist. They've not disappeared with the passing of one verdict or one judgment. They will also not disappear. So for every young person today who thinks that the 377 judgment was about equality and about freedom and it liberated everybody, uh, that's simply not true. The, I think the vast majority of the country carries on today thinking the way they did earlier and certainly I would say the government also which at the end of the day was not rejoicing and embracing the reading down of section 377 they did not file an affidavit saying decriminalize they said you do what you want to do so it was a reticence that they showed even at that stage of the hearing and that reticence is now to a much greater extent for instance the same-sex marriage petitions they are uh, filing affidavits which say that marriage can only be between a biological man and a biological woman. So the powers that be, I don't know whether the politicians or the bureaucrats or who it is, but all of them, I think, have a certain mindset 
or a world view which is some 20 years behind the rest of the world and certainly 20 years behind the youth of this country as well you know uh, mr rodgi you perhaps have greater access to the executive since you were attorney general you tell us is the government of india so conservative today that they seem to be repelled by the very idea that india would have a gay judge or someone who's openly uh, saying that uh, you know he or she uh, he is a gay judge are you telling me that there are people in this government who cannot accept that very prospect uh, raidi before i answer your question the first thing is that neither the collegium nor the executive government is in the habit of writing back or responding so there is no way that saurabh can write a letter and expect a reply it's completely out of sync as far as our judicial or executive uh, system is set up secondly i also agree with saurabh that a judgment may have come but it's not as if that vast majority here is actually jumping with joy yes it affects those who are affected by it but a lot of people are indifferent to it a lot of people don't care so it's not such a big thing for india and its people and as he said you know you may have a judgment but mindsets don't change by judgments only look at look at untouchability look at the ugly side of casteism it was supposed to have been long gone but you read about it every day in the papers ugly incidents people being uh, you know tortured or killed between the lower caste higher caste and all that and uh, as far as the reason is concerned it is i have no doubt in my mind that the only reason is saurabh sexuality i will tell you from from another angle the law is that once the collegium recommends the government has the right to consider and maybe send back the recommendation with certain queries that was done but once the queries are answered by the collegium and in their own words quote and quote the request is reiterated then post the reiteration there is no escape from the fact that the person has to be appointed that is a verdict which cannot be disobeyed that is what the law is reiteration in this case has happened four years or three years ago after that there is no reason why the verdict of the collegium should not have been followed now here lies the weakness of our system once that is the law that is the verdict of the highest court it has to be followed and it is jolly well dependent on on the court to ensure that this verdict is followed i mean if you are going to have a court which gives a verdict which is not followed then the entire system of judiciary and the rule of law will break down i mean a verdict will be followed to the t to the end if it's a dispute say between me and you but it will not be followed if it is in a situation like this this is actually a case of breakdown of the rule of law rule of orderliness in society and civilization and if the supreme court does not wake up and do its job it will mean that the verdicts will no longer be invariably followed that is the sad part of this larger picture see to saurabh it doesn't matter beyond a point because he is a good hard working bright and a successful lawyer so it's not as if that he is hankering for the post there are many who hanker for the post because they not much is going for them it doesn't really matter in his case because he is he is a very busy counsel but the larger and the sad part of the picture is that a unanimous verdict of the court is being disobeyed randomly